Today I want to share what the Lord has placed on my heart today. And if you'll turn your Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 5. It is a privilege and a pleasure. And I won't directly read the scripture. But I'm just going to go directly to the subject and walk the text a bit this morning. Is it all right that I be myself? I want to use for a subject today. God is saying to you, I still break nets. God is saying, I still break nets. You all in Luke chapter 5 verses 1 through 11. And I'll get to the scriptures in just a moment. But this passage of scripture talks about the boys, the boats, and the blessings. In Luke chapter 5, you learn about the boys, the boats, and the blessings. In this chapter, you all, Jesus calls Andrew and his brother Simon Peter. James and John, the sons of Zebedee. A couple of these guys were at one time disciples of John the Baptist. Jesus met them first. You are in John chapter 1, verse 35 through 42. You need to understand that John the Baptist sees Jesus and says to the disciples following him, Look, this is the Lamb of God. Jesus didn't call them at that time, but he knew that they would eventually be his disciples. Now, sometimes God will allow you to stay right where you are for a season, knowing that the day is coming where you are going to be following him. And he always allows seasons uh, where you can stay until it is your time. Now, let's just be honest. I know we're in church today, but some of us, God let us stay in the club a little while until it was time. God allowed us to stay into in some addictions until it was time. I, I don't want no domestic violence in the room, but some of us, he allowed to stay in bad relationships until it was time for a good relationship. See, this is a word to all of you all that are praying for some of your loved ones to get saved. And Jesus sees them right where they are. And sooner than later, for about five shouters, God's going to give them a call. And I don't know about you all, but in this day and time, it seems like there is a great falling away from the church. Seems like this is the most godless generation that we have ever had. But can I tell you, there are some last names that you ought to call right now. And when you shout out that last name, I decree and declare, everybody in your bloodline, God's going to save them and deliver them and heal them and bring them out. On the count of three, I need you to shout your last name. One, two, three, shout it out. Here's the question. How are you going to praise God when he saved everybody with that last name? How are you going to magnify God? There is a time that he's going to call them and bring them in. Be patient with them the same way God was patient with you. It is also here where Andrew goes to get his brother Simon and says, we have found the Messiah. Peter comes and Jesus looks at him and says, you are Simon, son of John. Your name will be Cephas. And this was the Messiah signifying, I know who you are. And I know where you came from. But most importantly, I know where you're headed. Yeah, yeah, when Jesus changes your course, he typically changes what you're called. I, I got three witnesses over there. Let me say it again. When he changed your course, he changes what you are called. At first he was called Cephas, but now he was called Peter. Talk to me, somebody. And the second time Jesus connects with them is in Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. Jesus keeps walking by the lake where he knows these fellows are working and casting and washing and mending tools to catch fish. But the third time in this passage we deal with today, Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, Jesus called them to apostleship, fishers of men. He may not change your profession, but over time he will certainly change your proclamation. Yeah, I got some witnesses here early in the morning. 
Uh, the difference in Matthew chapter 4 and Luke chapter 5 is in Matthew, he encouraged the disciples become fishers of men. And in Luke, he demonstrated how successful they were going to be. And that's why you all in the Message Bible, you all, we find in this particular chapter, Luke chapter 5 in the Message Bible, it says, once when he was standing on the shore of Lake Genesareth, the crowd was pushing in on him to better hear the word of God. He noticed two boats that were tied up. Somebody shout two boats. Two boats that were tied up. The fishermen had just left them and were out scrubbing their nets. And he climbed into the boat that was, watch this, Simon's and asked him to put out a little far from the shore. Sitting there using the boat for a pulpit. Jesus taught the crowd. See, Lake Genesareth, which is known as the Sea of Galilee, uh, it means harp. You all, it was named after its shape, the shape of music. I've been to Israel six times and going back on the seventh time in a month from now, and it is literally shaped like a harp. You all, and notice he saw two unused vessels sitting at a standstill, and he just climbed in without permission. Let me say it again. He sees two unused vessels sitting at a standstill and he climbs in without their permission. And I want to prophesy that in this next season, the Lord is jumping into empty spaces and taking over the whole vessel. And is there anybody here can honestly admit you didn't ask to be saved, but God decided that you were going to be saved. You didn't ask to be pulled in, but he decided you were going to be pulled in. You didn't ask to be used, but he decided that he was going to use you. See, verse 1 suggests that the people uh, pressed upon Jesus for one specific purpose, and that was the word of God. Verse 3 shows that Jesus asked Peter, thrust out a little from the land. And he wanted to be sure that everyone could experience him visibly and verbally. And sometime in order for people to appreciate and apprehend the Lord, he at times created a distance between himself and his sheep. And, and I don't know about y'all, but, but, but it feels good 19 months later, after they first announced COVID-19, to be able to be back in God's house. I got the right people in here. I don't, I don't know if you are on the scene or you're watching on the screen, but is there anybody in here that will lift up a praise because you're just glad you were able to be back in God's house? Come on, COVID-19 told you you can't come in, but you waited on the day where you no longer had to be socially distant from being next to somebody that will praise God. You, you are glad. That's why you didn't have to pump and prime some of these people. They said, I'm just glad to be back in God's house. So I'm going into his gates with thanksgiving. I'm going to come before his court with praise. I'm going to be thankful unto him and bless his name. Why? For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. You all, verse 4, declares this, that, that in the Message Bible, when he finished teaching, he said to Simon, push out into the deep water and let your nets down for a catch. See, the first push out from the shore was demonstrative for teaching people, but the second launch out was demonstrative for reaching people, fishing for men. And Brown, the reason you ought to be glad today is you witnessed a stage and a room full of men that clearly love the Lord. I want every woman in here to go crazy for all of these men of God. Come on, you better, oh, all the men, shout out for yourself, fellas. And here is what I want to prophesy, that more men are on the way. Talk to me. I'm talking about your sons, your, your nephews. I'm talking about young men that God is going to draw in. And if you got young men in your family, if you got older men in your family, praise God for their salvation now. Praise God for their relationship with God now. But it's going to take some chosen people to draw them in. And if you are gifted to teach, but no man wants to listen, then you are an educated waste of time. 
You're an educated waste of info. See, the fact of the matter is, whatever we get in here this week, you got to go and preach what you heard. And go tell somebody in the break room at the job, I know a Jesus that can save and heal you and deliver you. You got to see them at the grocery store and tell them, I know a Savior that can turn your life completely around. Listen to me good. All the preaching cannot be on the pulpit. Most of it got to be in the pews. A lot of it got to be at the house. And at the Sea of Galilee, it was known as the lake that was sometime calm. But it was also a sea that was at times raging. See, the good news is regardless what the situation was with the water, it was always, it was always the case that they had to obey the Son of God. He says, launch out into the deep. This is challenging for Peter because now the Lord is stretching him beyond his experiential capacity. Peter was used to fishing and navigating in shallow water. But now God pushes him into the deep. God is getting ready to stretch many of us beyond our own limitations. And can I tell you, the greatest threat to being great is to celebrate being good too long. I'm going to say it again. The greatest threat to doing what is greater is being so impressed with doing what is good. I want to decree and declare that the church is getting ready to do more than it ever has done. The kingdom is getting ready to draw in more than we ever have. Do I have a witness in the house? Come on, don't, don't leave me out there by myself. Somebody shout greater. Launch out into the deep. God is going to stretch you. Let me tell you, here's what God is telling you. When he tells Peter to launch into the deep, he's prophesying to all of us. He's saying, get ready for new territory. Come on, shout new territory. God will call you to do something beyond your skills and beyond uh, your ability, but only when he's ready to give you more than you've ever had before. Only when you're ready to do more than you've ever done before. See, abundant living trumps mediocrity every single time. And when you look at verse 5, here's what it says. Simon said, Master, we've been fishing hard all night. <laughs> We've been doing this all night and, and haven't caught even a minnow. That's what the message Bible said. We've been doing this a long time, but we ain't caught nothing yet. But if you say so, I'll let out the nets. The scripture says this, it was no sooner than, watch this, it was no sooner said than done. A huge haul of fish straining the nets, I got praises here, past their capacity. Lord have mercy. They waved to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They filled both boats. Y'all ain't shouting. They filled both boats. I'm not just talking about this campus and the other campus, but there's going to be a need for more room. You're going to fill everything that you got, nearly swamping them with the catch. But I don't want to... I don't want to push past this point because Peter does what most failures do. We give God an excuse for not obeying him. Lord, we tried that before. Master, we have toiled all night and we have taken nothing. Let me tell you, if you invited them to church and they didn't come this Sunday, invite them again next Sunday. Come on, if you invited them to God and they didn't come the first time, invite them the next time. Do it over and over again. He said you got to compel them to come. What that might mean is you got to do more than invite them. Sometimes you got to pick them up. Y'all got to talk to me up in here. Here it is. Look at, look at what we did and look at what we got, Lord. We tried that before, but it didn't work. I want to prophesy to somebody that tried to start a business. And I want to tell you it's going to work this time. I want to talk to somebody that tried to fix the relationship. It's going to work this time. I want to talk to somebody that had a dream, but it turned into a nightmare. I want to tell you, it's going to work this time. And the only people that I want to shout up in here are the folks that failed before. And here it is. You survived the failure in the past. And it is because God is getting ready to push you to a place of success in this next season of your life. Can I tell about three shouters in here? Every no that you got, 
it preceded the yes that is getting ready to come in your life open up your mouth and praise God because this is the season where everything that failed in the past it's going to work this time somebody shout it's getting ready to work don't you give God no excuses notice in verse 2 Jesus got in the boat but by verse 6, the Lord filled the vessel that he used. Let me say it again. Verse 2, it's an empty boat. But by verse 6, it's full. You missed it. Verse 2, it's empty. Verse 6, it's full. Can I tell you, you four verses away from a full. Open door. Y'all, you just a few verses. Let them look at you like you ain't nothing right now. But in a few more verses, okay, y'all didn't shout. In a few more days, the very thing that had nothing is getting ready to have everything. You ought to shout in just a few more days. Yay! I'm getting a little happy. I'm getting a little happy. The Lord feels everything he's in. <laughs> he, he, he feels everything that says, go ahead and use me. And let me tell you, in verse 6, uh, you, you read it before, you Sunday school students, here, here it is, you, you know the book. In verse 6, the Bible says, the net broke. <laughs> and can I tell y'all, I'm running out of time, but, but the net broke. And, and I want to tell you that the net broke for two reasons. The first reason that it broke is it was used. Ooh, I like this 8 o'clock crowd, y'all pushing me. It, it, it was used and some folks never have tears because they've never been used before. Well, this is a good job. Some of y'all got tears because you were being used by God. You prayed for people that didn't pray for you. You fed people that didn't feed you. You looked out for people that didn't look out for you. But God told me to tell you, I'm going to mend every tear in your life because you decided to be used and because I used you, I'm going to fix you. All right, wait. Would y'all sit down, Brown? It's too early for this behavior. The first reason that it broke is it was used. But the second reason that it broke whew, was frustration and failure can handicap the mending process. Menders tied knots but it still broke. Let me say it again, they were mending. The text says Jesus found them washing and mending the nets. And when it got full, it still broke. Can I ask y'all a question in my last 12 minutes? Have you ever done all you could do to fix something, but it still broke? Vince, I don't know why they acting like this this morning. Have you ever fasted and prayed and, and bowed down and humbled yourself and it still broke sometime you ask God why me why this and why now and God says sometime I allow it to break so you can find out I can fix anything that got broke is there anybody in here that can testify the last time it got broke I thought it would never get fixed again oh but when I look back over my life I see it was God that fixed it. You thought your education was going to do it. You thought your bank account was going to do it. You thought your hookups were going to do it. But give me 50 people that'll jump up and shout, God did it. I just need you to say, God did it. God did it. Yeah, I was educated, but I couldn't do it. I was gifted, but I couldn't do it. I had the right names to drop, but I couldn't do it. Open your mouth and praise them for 15 seconds. Because everything that broke, God fixed it. Hallelujah. All right. All right, I, I got to go. I got to go, but, but, but I'm going I'm to tell you this. I want to tell you, when, when I looked at Deuteronomy chapter 28, whoo, getting a little happy this morning. When I looked at Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 2 through 6, in the Message Bible, uh, verse 1, it says, if you listen obediently to the voice, Deuteronomy 28, in the Message Bible, if you listen obediently to the voice of the God, uh, your God, and heartily obey all his commandments that I command you today, God your God, 
Y'all ain't shouting. We'll place you on high. <laughs> high above all the nations of the world. Here is the shout. And all these blessings will come down on you and spread out beyond Woo! you because you have responded to the voice of your God. God, God's blessing inside the city. God's blessing in the country. God's blessing on your children. God's blessing on your crops. God's blessing on the young of your livestock. God's blessing on the calves of your herd, the lambs of your flock. God's blessing on your basket and your bread bowl. God's blessing in your coming in. God's blessing in your coming out. When you obey God's voice, like Peter did, blessings come from everywhere. And I came to prophesy to Brown today, look for blessings from the east. Look for blessings from the west. Look for blessings from the north. Look for blessings from the south. And the reason God's going to do it is some of your haters never thought you would be anything. But God said, because you obeyed me, this is the season of overflow. Shout for God overflowing stuff in your life. All right, all right. All right, we got to go. We got to go. Verse 7. This is also why you got to be careful how you treat other people. <laughs> now, I ain't scared of none of y'all. I'm from the projects. Don't play with me. <laughs> I'm from Chicago where we kill people every day. Talk to me. <laughs> Only competing with Memphis. Y'all ain't talking to me over here. <laughs> you, you got to understand. You got to be careful how you treat other folks. Because if you act right, God will send unbroken people to assist you. In your season of brokenness and you can't just speak to people when you need them okay this is my section over here they they making me nervous uh, uh, you better be careful how you treat people because life is like an elevator the same thing that's up one day can come down the next day and if you treat people right God will many times, according to the text, he will send unbroken people to assist you in your seasons of brokenness. See, this verse said that they waved to their partners in the other boat and said, come and help us. Oh, this is a shout. Because until now, somebody say the second boat. Until now, the second boat has been left behind. But because of the overflow, even the forgotten boat got filled. Woo! This, I feel it. Listen to me good. You got to understand, even the, unfor even the forgotten boat got filled. Every single empty boat that has been at a standstill, listen to me good, in a season of uselessness, God is saying, because you are available. I'm about to fill you up. God is saying, I didn't forget about you. And it just wasn't your time yet. It wasn't your turn yet. But I need somebody to shout, my time has come. Uh, you were not the main attraction at that time. But God said, your time has come. Yeah, you were not being used at that time. But God said, your time has come. No, you were not in the forefront of everybody else. But God told me to tell you that your time has come. And is there anybody in here that's been in the background for a while? And you've been pushing everybody else? I've learned that there's a difference between the performer and the producer. And a lot of people like being the performer. The performer is always on the stage. The performer is always getting the hand clap. The performer is always getting the accolades. But God said to tell you that you're not just a performer. But he said to tell you that you've always been a producer. Because the difference between a performer and a producer is a performer loves to be on the stage. But God said the producer is the one that likes to build the stage so somebody else can perform on. But God told me to tell every second boat that's in brown today that your season is coming uh, for God to pull you out of the background uh, and pull you to the forefront. Uh, have I got a witness in the house? Uh, and I heard the Bible declares uh, that in verse 8 the text says uh, that when God began to fill up the boat uh, because Joe, brother Peter had doubts in his mind uh, 
God said that the boat began to get filled. And as I get ready to close and go to my seat, I got to ask y'all a question. Is there anybody in here that's been pushing other people? Is there anybody in here that's been praying for everybody else? Is there anybody in here that said, I like being in the background? God told me to tell you that get it ready because this season is the season of the second boat. The first boat Jesus stood in, but the second boat was not too far away. And I came to tell somebody today that this is the season of of the second boat uh, get yourself ready uh, because some of y'all that are employees you're getting ready to become the employer he told me to tell you uh, that you gotta change your way change your way of thinking uh, he said you're the head uh, and not the tail uh, you are b- above uh, and you're not beneath uh, you are the lender and not the borrower uh, somebody shout the second boat uh, and the word declares that there is a real miracle because the second boat uh, it worked less uh, than the first boat uh, and what God sent me to tell you is you're gonna do less uh, and you're gonna get more Uh, have I got a witness in the house uh, and some of the stuff you're gonna get uh, is not because you worked hard but because your grandmother uh, and your grandfather because your mother uh, and your father uh, because your great-great-grandmother and your great-great-grandfather they were praying before God they were sitting in the church they were sowing their seeds and they laid up a harvest but God told me to tell you if you're in here right now you are the second boat and you need to get ready because everything that he owed your great-grandmother everything that he owed your great-grandfather everything that he owed your mother and he owed your father he's gonna release uh, the overflow uh, and break the net uh, it's a harvest time is there anybody in here that's ready for God uh, to release the harvest raise your hand uh, and say Lord uh, send on the overflow have I got a witness in the house wave it down uh, and say Lord uh, send the overflow I need somebody that will make up your mind and said I'm ready to receive overflow now shout overflow I gotta quit but abundance requires several things it requires the right positioning that's where the boys were they were positioned right it requires the right patience you got to wait until it's your season oh but then it requires the right persistence you can't afford to give up and you can't afford to throw in the towel oh as I land the plane I gotta ask you I looked at the text and I said wait a minute God how is it that you find Peter and the boys mending the nets and then you get into it and that which was empty four verses later now it's full I said wait what about the nets if the net is broken how did they get overflow oh as I rest in my seat I'll tell you how I figured it out I said Lord let me use my Holy Ghost imagination because if they didn't catch the fish with the net You got to ask, how did they get in the boat? Clearly, God started talking to the fish and said, fish, start jumping inside the boat. And I came to tell somebody that will get on your feet and praise God. This is the season where it's all going to come easier this time. I believe the fish start jumping inside the boat. And if you want joy to jump in, send up a praise. If you want peace to jump in the boat, send up a praise. If you want favor to jump in the boat, send up a praise. If you want overflow, shout and send up a praise. Oh, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Do you want it? Do you want it? Do you want it? Bless his name. Bless his name. 
bless his name. There ought to be some second boats in the house right now that says, God, I'm ready. I'm ready for greater. I'm ready for greater. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard the great things that God has in store for us. The devil thought he was going to take us out. But God says, because of your patience and persistence, thank you, Pastor, I'm getting ready to do something else. Bless his name. Yeah.